Hi. Um, I thought that I would go ahead and do my uh, FICS uh, video. This one's going to be a long one because I'm going to show you something that should be kind of fun. Um, <coughs> what I need to do is see if I can get a game. Let me see. 15 22 okay so uh, the uh, upside to this is I get to show you something fun and the downside to this is, is that I have to follow some rules and I'm going to explain them as I go so I need to get a game that is at my level uh, my level being 1200 to uh, let's say uh, let's say 1800 so my level is in between 1200 and 1800 depending on depending on the day um, I'm gonna say rated oh no yeah seek and then we'll date we'll say um, 20 with a 10 second increment to make it hard on me and 1200 to 1800 which is good okay so this is FICS and I'm gonna send the challenge for 1200 to 1800 which is about my level for what this is and uh, it's a surprise and you'll figure it out when I do it okay so here we go there's the post if you look over in this general area you'll see that there's some circles and the blue one is me and if you look over here it'll say 1500 to 2250 that's the rating my rating on here right now in FICS on this account is in between 1250 and 1500 so probably 14, 1400 or so that's because I lost a few games um, the question is is do people want to play this account or not I haven't, d I haven't done this in a while <coughs> So we don't know if uh, we'll get a game like this, but I figured it was a little exciting. And uh, depending on how the game goes, we could show you uh, some other things. So let's see if we can get this game going. Uh, while we're waiting. Uh, remember the blue one is me uh, the black ones are unrated see and then um, the red ones are uh, registered people I'm sorry the black ones are usually yeah un yeah they're unrated uh, the, the square ones those are um, wild games like crazy house bug house and all that um, then here is the board and how it looks. I don't know if you guys like the pieces. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to, I have to minimize the board now. That's part of the rules. And um, now we will maximize this. No, not maximize. That's ugly. Okay. So this is what we'll do. Here is my board. He played d4, d5, um, knight f3. Okay. Um, if you haven't been able to tell yet, I'm playing blind. <laughs> okay, so bishop f5, uh, e3. Okay, so what rating are we playing? Uh, we are, let's... Uh, Oh, he is a 1300. He should be able to give me a bit of a challenge, considering I'm only 1372. <laughs> okay, so my blind rating is 1372. Okay, refresh. Okay, so the last move was bishop e4, which is a little bit strange. <laughs> 
So I will entice him to play. Um, uh, bishop takes knight. Let's see if he does it. <sighs> oh, no, huh? Okay, so we'll play knight takes e4. Let's see if he plays d takes. Oh, he plays knight takes e4. Interesting. So we'll play bishop d3. Okay, so this is how we do it. Uh, he has a knight on e4. He has a pawn on d5. Oh, look at that. He's going to do that. Wow. Okay, so king takes f2. Um, he just sacrificed a piece, which I should get a lot of rating points from in this game. <laughs> uh, e6. So he sacrificed a piece. Okay, so my king is on f2. I have a pawn on e3, pawn on d4, knight on f3. Bishop on d3. He has no pieces developed. Uh, I have three. No piece. I have all my pieces developed in the king side. I have a knight off of there. The only piece I have to develop is my bishop on c1 and my queen. My rooks. The bishop is protecting the pawn. Okay. So, now we want to try to castle. But we have to castle by hand because I just moved my king. But he has no pieces developed. So uh, that means that not only am I at a piece, but he's, I have, he, there's no pieces developed. So I'm going to play rook f1. Like that. Now when I was, when I was playing this a lot, uh, I used to be able to play at a 1700 level. I don't know if I still have that record. Let me see. Um, oh, I guess I've never had a best. but. Uh, my rating was around 1600 when I used to play this, but uh, it, it's went down. I should, I guess, I should play more. Anyway, so he's going for the attack. Uh, he plays h5, which means that there's no backup to that. Um, very weird game. Okay, so h5. He hasn't had any of the pieces developed, right? He develop. He sacked his only developed piece. Uh, we have uh, no pawn on f2. Okay, so we'll play king g1. What's my time? Eight minutes. Good. Okay, so king g1. Now I'm castled, and um, uh, so now I can. Oh, he plays h4. Uh, I guess he really wants that attack. Guess he really wants that attack. Okay, so h4. That means that. Um, okay, so I'll play h3 since he doesn't have any sacrifices on h3. <coughs> um, plus, I think I can. I think I can route my knight, or not, not my knight. I think I can route my queen around uh, to do this. Uh, he plays g5. So uh, he has a pawn on g5, pawn on h5. There's no pieces developed. There's no pieces developed. But the queen should be protecting um, uh, g5. So the knight can't take g5. Um, if I was to push to e4, then um, I would be attacking that. Now he probably could take on e4 with the pawn on d5, but um, does that really matter? Do I really have to worry about the push to g4? I don't think so. Um, uh, there's no pawn on f2, but there's a knight there. I could play knight to e5, and that would protect g4. Okay, so we'll play knight e5. Huh? 
He doesn't have any pieces developed. There wasn't a, a pawn moved f6. So he should have a pawn on f6, e6, d5, c7, and b7 and h7, a7. And then he should have a pawn on h4 and g5 and f7, e6. And then um, I should be castled <laughs> now with a pawn on h3 and g2 and uh, e3, d4. And I haven't even set up my Coley Sucretor yet, so that means that I have uh, pawns on c2, b2, and a2 with my bishop on c1, queen on d1, rook on a1, and he hasn't done any developing. So I should be attacking the pawn on f7. <coughs> with my knight and my rook, so he has to think about that attack. Bishop to d6. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> that kind of attacks my knight. I don't think it does very much. I probably can still take on f7, can't I? So there should be... He played, played a silly attack, so I could probably take... Okay, so... I can take on knight and it takes f7. Knight takes f7, that should fork the queen and rook, I think. Yeah. It's funny that, uh, that this would be playing out like this. Okay, so knight takes f7. So that'll fork. Amazing. Amazing. Not only did he resign on that, but... Oh my god. Um, okay, so that boosted me right back up to what I used to be a long time ago, which is uh, 1503. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think what happened is is that I averaged uh, 1600. So I'm almost back to where I was. But uh, um, the now I'm back. I'm, that gave me a lot of points. I'm really surprised it gave me so many. Uh, it's probably because I'm still provisional. Okay, so now to get to what the meat of this is. We had a little fun. I showed you a blindfold game. I kicked a 1300's butt. So um, let's bring this back up. And uh, we are going to show you the strength of this server. You see all this? This, all this that I can highlight? this is the server output and once you get to understand the server output like like if you look in this area these were the moves and this was the rating adjustment and this is him saying that it was resigned okay well here's my clock and all that alright well that's blind this is my blindfold account uh, the reason why I had it like that with all this uh, verbal analysis and all that was because I am on a blind account, so it forces me to only play in the console. Uh, when I'm not in my blindfold account, I uh, I can play normal, like on this board over here. But the good thing about a blindfold account is, is once you examine it, you can uh, look at a regular board and see what the board looked like. So what we're going to do is examine my last game, and that is the command EXL. Okay. So it'll bring up a board, and here's my account, Nemesis Blind 1372 Ram Bam Ram 1343. Um, if you look at this point here, there's there's the chat in which there's kibitz set. You can set it to kibitz, whisper, p tell, or say. P tell is, I believe, the last tell that you sent to or something, or player tell or something. Uh, this I think what p tell has to do with is bug house. Oh, partner tell. I think that's what that is. If it's bug house, it'll send it directly to your partner. Okay, so say sends it to your opponent. Uh, Whisper sends it to observers only, so it won't go to your opponent. Uh, kibitz sends it to your opponent and uh, observers. So we're keeping it at kibitz, and if you type anything in like that, it'll go straight there. It'll show who your name is. Uh, this B here stands for uh, blindfold. Uh, there's the rating, and there's what I said. Okay. Uh, when you go here, this is, in theory, where you would edit the PGN. 
So you'd type all your comments like, I am white here, and I kicked this 1300's rear end. And then and theoretically you'd save it. Okay, so uh, this is where the observers are. So once you click observers, you'll see everybody who is observing. And I think it goes to um, a title screen or a, a, a scrolling screen if there's more people. So you can see everybody. Um, this is computer analysis. You can install any computer that does Windboard or UCI. <laughs> um, I will get back to that later. Sorry. Uh, try and keep that part private because there could be people that don't want to know who they, who they are publicly. Um, <coughs> okay, so this is the analysis. It can auto start, <laughs> which means if I click there and press start, then it'll just analyze with the computer automatically. Uh, default is crafty. Uh, and like I said, you can install any Windboard or UCI engine. Right now I have Ribka. So if I wanted to start it, it'll it'll start a little. Let me see if it'll do it real quick. I don't know if there. Okay. So there's the analysis. Of course, it doesn't have the opening book in there, so the opening doesn't matter. Uh, so it'll start out with night F3. It'll keep going. It'll give you like a score. Here's the score. Here's the time it took. Here's the positions it sees, and this is the depth. So I hate computer analysis. We're going to turn it off. Uh, observers, we went over that. Analysis, we went over that. Comments, we went over that. Chat, and we went over that. Uh, you can get rid of it. You can expand. See, you can expand. Uh, right now, I just want to keep it in this little window. Um, so we will show that you can go forward. This is the game and what it looked like. Now, this was obviously an error. And what we're doing is, is we're making sure that what I saw in the game, which wasn't very hard because he didn't play very good, uh, matched what I saw in my head. So, so far this is right. So he played the bishop d4 and I took the bishop with a knight and he took with the knight. And then when I played bishop to d3, he sacked on f2. And then I took on f2. And then e6, rook f1, h5, king g1 h4, h3, g5. And then I verified here at this point that there's a that the knight could take but is protected by the queen. I don't know if you remember all that. Um, so I also verified that if I pushed e4 that he could take it and then I could take. But I wasn't really quite sure if that was correct at this time. Uh, and you know now that I watch it it probably is pretty good. Uh, the only reason why I think it might be wrong is because uh, if it's just to get this pawn, then it's not really that great. Because, you know, the pawn really isn't that dangerous. So, what I did was I played knight e5. And then, bishop to d6, knight takes near resigned. Okay, well, we can go back now. See how it says forward one move? And then it shows that he resigned, and then it shows backwards? This means that you have full control over the board. And this is what I mean by full control. So, let's pretend like he was a smart player. Let me go back. Okay, well, let's pretend like he's a kind of smart player. No offense to this guy, of course. But, uh, you know, obviously he played extraordinarily bad. I'm even surprised that as a 1300 he did this. But uh, there's a slight possibility that he did that because I was blind. So, bishop d3. Now we're going to pretend like he's got a little chess knowledge to him. So let's say he wanted to pull his knight back. So we're going to play there. Okay. And all we're doing is editing the position. Now in the meantime, observers can follow and they can ask questions and you can answer questions. You can say hi like this and it'll go through. Um, and then you can continue. You can like say, okay, now I'm going to castle. He plays e6. Bishop d2, for example. Oh no, I'm going to... I'm going to do my little thing here. Okay, so bishop d6, bishop d2, castle. And then since he played the variation he played, this is one of those variations where I probably would play c4, and this is how it would look. And I think probably white has a, a, a mediocre advantage, maybe a, a, maybe a pretty sizable advantage. I don't know. 
just the fact that he's, you know, getting pieces out and everything probably dictates that he has a pretty good advantage, maybe even an initiative. Okay. Well, now we can back up that analysis. We can't go forward because it's not, if you look over here, it says you cannot go forward unless you're in the main line. So how do you get to the main line? Well, there is two ways. One is better than the other. Uh, one is to type, uh, to go over here to the console and type back like this and put 999. And basically it'll just reset the whole game. Or there's a little button down here. It says revert. If you click that, it just reverts and it goes back to the original position. You can do that anywhere. Um, if you do do the, uh, the line like this and it goes through, you can redo it like this. Let's say he castles like a smart person. C4. Okay. Well, let's say that you're not so sure about the analysis and you kind of do want a little a little kick to see if the the engine agrees with you well come on over here and then go like this okay and it says yeah well there you go uh, almost a half a pawn advantage that's that's a pretty sizable advantage because computers usually say that uh, white has a a point two advantage because of the move well a point four advantage is a little bit more than the move advantage so that's what this is saying and I hate computer analysis, so we're going to stop. Let's double check everything, make sure nobody is watching us. You can always check this and make sure somebody is watching you. Okay. I was checking to see if there was a friend online, because he could help out with this. But, I mean, oh, yeah, that's right. All right, so let's say that you wanted to um, let's say that you wanted to talk to somebody you were talking and you were trying to teach them something or you were trying to show them something you're like look what this guy did so we're gonna revert we're gonna say look what this guy did I don't believe what this guy did so you go forward and you go oh my gosh he did that but you wanna say you wanna accentuate that point well here's a add it says add circle we're gonna select add arrow and it, it noticed that it kind of de indents there. And all you have to do is say, let's point, click, and it will add, it will add an arrow anywhere you want. And the beautiful part of this is, let's change it to a circle. Let's change it to a circle. You can, you can circle things. The only problem that I have with a circle is I should probably change the color because of the squares, but it'll add a circle. You could circle things. Well, this is the thing is uh, it will send it'll send this analysis to um, uh, your whoever's watching that has this interface um, there used to be uh, a program script made for the gin interface where gin could do this too but I lost it <laughs> Um, okay, so this should be some interesting stuff. Um, edit mode, game okay. properties. Mode. What is this? Okay. Auto flag on. Oh, show console. If you click that, it takes the console away, brings it back. Uh, F2 takes away. Takes away the main console. See, see how it's disappearing. Okay, if you let me see what the board one is. Oh, board, board is F7. Look at that. Okay, so if you push F7, oh, the board will face front. If you press F7, the board will come back. It won't disappear though. Um, let's see. These up here are my quick commands. Uh oh. Let's do this. I minimized a little bit. This is what was up here. These are my quick commands. If I ever want to do like five minute, fifteen minute, or something like that, those are I just push those and they automatically send out a they automatically send out a CCAD. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Um, of 
course this is the info window it has okay so do we got the idea of board control let's uh, see if we can get rid of all these guys there uh, what else can I show you on, on uh, board control uh, oh I know what I can show you um, let me uh, Where'd my phone go? Oh, I know what I can do. Watch this. This is cool. Where is it? Oh. I'm starting another interface that I have. Um, <coughs> I think I used this once on my other video. Um, so, we are going to observe myself. There I am. Okay. Now, this interface is similar. It can do almost the same thing, except for it can't draw those little circles and arrows. But as you can see, you can see the observers too. You can do whisper, kibitz, tell opponent, you can tell, do an RPT tell. That's uh, telling somebody who you last told. Uh, you can leave the table. Here's the analysis board. Uh, here's an accept and decline button. It's almost totally point and click. Uh, one of the funny things about this is if you right click on the board, it has taunts. So any one of these, if you have a chess machine interface, you could tell your opponent one of these. So if you notice, there's a little, you know, mm -mm -mm, right? He actually says it. Uh, there's the, you're pissing me off. There's the snore. There's the, I'm a greedy slob. So if you are a pawn grabber, you're, if you're like a dirty, greedy pawn grabber, it'll tell you that. Uh, this is a quote from Homer Simpson. I don't know if you heard that or not, but I did. But, you know, it's funny. This is a funny interface. This is what I use for like quick chess. But that's not the point. What the point is, is that right now if you feel, if you, if you try to move the pieces, you can't. See, you can't. Okay. So, here's the, here's another strength. If I was to go over back over here where I'm the boss and I type in MEX and I type in Nemesis. Okay, then that MEX stands for Make Examiner. So I hit enter and it makes me an examiner over there. So I go back over here and guess what? There's me making myself an examiner. Well now I can go castle if I want to. I can manipulate the pieces, right? I can, uh, I can type in revert and it'll revert me back to the position. I can take the king. I can revert. I can move forward. See? And um, I can do this with anybody. I can, I can uh, make anybody who is a watcher and examiner and they all can participate. They all can, uh, if they have uh, Baba's chest, they can all uh, put in uh, those little circles and arrows. Uh, this is why I think that FICS and ICC and all those are stronger because of this and the fact that if you want to analyze a game, you want to learn something, uh, this is this is what is the strength. Uh, another thing is if you finger uh, lecture bot. LectureBot is the server's uh, lecture uh, program and it uh, does a scripting lecture so it'll show you things in sc and it'll go through a script and uh, it'll show you things on the board it'll manipulate the pieces and it'll show you things so one of the first places that I learned one of my openings was LectureBot um, I guess that's really all I can show you I'm gonna log off here now Okay. 
uh, that uh, interface is kind of outdated, and sometimes it gives me um, it gives me runtime errors. So I've I pretty much uh, you know switched to this one. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that there's themes that can be in put in place for to make it look like that. Um, let's see if we can save preferences. I don't know if I want to do that, but um, let's not do that right now. We'll do same preferences on exit. Okay. So that is pretty much all I wanted to show you because all I wanted to show you was a little fun and then show you what it would look like to manipulate the board a little bit. Um, as you can see, it's very powerful on uh, board manipulation. Um, uh, I do have two accounts on here. Actually, I have three accounts. Uh, one is a uh, is a computer account, and I've considered uh, putting the computer account back on because um, uh, sometimes I like watching the computer play, and it's legal. So um, I guess that's all I'm gonna show you this time, and I hope this helps you out. And I might do a how-to uh, video as well. But this is matching the chess dot, or not chess, a uh, chess cube. Uh, comparison of uh, board manipulation. And I hope you uh, learn from it and enjoy it.